right, Lax, Rats, Lax, Rats, Drew Rogers, the chopper, back with the Chief Lane Jaffe. Lane, before we talk about these top 10 teams and get a little deeper, the uh, others in the mix, um, I want to talk a little bit about Culver City. Coach Chibola mentioned that they've got a very young team. They've only got three seniors returning. How do you see that team shaping up? Have you seen anything trending there that makes you think that they might be able to surprise some people? First off, they got a kid, Elliot Stanger, the kid's a beast. Um, so, you know, if he's any indication of what they have, they have some kids that can play. I believe last year, the second, the second part of the season, they were down 5-1 to a, a good Redondo team, and they came back and ended up winning that game. So it's clear that they can score goals in bunches. It's whether or not they're, they're able to put it together this year. So okay. we'll see they have. They're Great. Really young. Stanger, a third-year varsity starter, so that should give them some of the leadership they need with an otherwise pretty young team. So um, let's move over and talk a little bit about the poll we did. We sent out some questions and a number of coaches were kind enough to respond. And uh, I think you know some of their answers are very, very insightful. So I, what I want to do is kind of do the Hefe quiz here. I'm going to read to you a response and I want to see if you can nail the coach, okay? Yeah, nail it. All right, so the, the response was, um, which teams do you have to, are you concerned about that might match up well against you? And, and here was the response, Peninsula, definitely. They really don't lose anyone, and their goalie is a game changer. And no one plays better on their home grass slash dirt field than Peninsula. So who would say, sounds like he's bagging on your field a little bit. A little bagging on the field, maybe a little sandbagging. I'm thinking uh, I'm going to keep it in the Bailey. It's either going to be a Redondo or, or a uh, Palos Verdes. Sounds like something Coach Burrell would say, because I said the only way they would win would be the field conditions or something. So I'm going to have to go with uh, Palos Verdes and Coach Burrell. Too. Jimmy Burrell, nice. probably hoping that it doesn't rain cats and dogs that day and you guys are in the muck. We will be watering the field. Well, <laughs> Rest assured. Is Peninsula the only team that still lacks a turf field, that's still playing on grass and dirt in the cows, all that? I believe Brentwood has a grass field, but nobody has a, a dirt mound field that we have. It's absolutely the worst field in L.A. Does it give us an advantage? Possibly, but truthfully, I'd, I'd rather be playing on some turf, but we'll, we'll take it. We practice on it. You got mutters, I hope. So uh, we'll see if you can water that field down and slow down that Burrell group. All right, so um, another uh, quiz for you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about another coach. When the, the question was, um, uh, how does your squad focus on the season? His, his comment was, we've got a strong foundation. We're focused on fundamentals and placing the emphasis on team success over individual success. Just to give you a hint, they've had no scrimmages yet, but um, he basically says his team is young and exciting. So can you can you make anything out of that, or you want to take a stab at who would have been uh, commenting that? That's tough. All right, I'm gonna give. Uh, yeah, you gotta give me a little more than okay, that. Okay, so there's a lot of young, exciting. All right, so they're in they're in the, they're in what remains of the Bay League. Okay. So uh, that that narrows it. It obviously wasn't you, yeah, yeah, right? Keeps so. on excited. I know once again, Palos Verdes has only five seniors. I don't want to keep saying Palos Verdes every answer, but with only five seniors, I think that kind of takes young. I think Maricosta, though, is young as well. I'm going with Costa. All right, it was Aaron Carr. Yeah, bam, bam. All right, there you go. Now, yeah. interesting thing about Costa, and again, my roots go back five or six years, but there's a program that, you know, four or five, six years ago was close to being dominant in the Bay League. Sure. They've had a, a couple of different coaching changes. What does their program look like overall? What are the challenges beyond what Coach Carr said? What, what do you think they need to do to get in the mix? It's tough. I, I, I don't want to say I feel bad for those kids, but you know they have to. They have a lot more adversity to overcome. Okay. Last quiz for you. All right. Here's what the coach said. We played shorthanded due to injury and SATs, but it was a great opportunity for our second and third stringers to get some experience. Talking about last weekend, I think. Uh, first of all, but before we get into who that was, how can SATs get in the way of lacrosse? These kids are missing the point. Where are the priorities among lacrosse. these coaches and players? Come on, guys. I mean, if you're watching this, would you rather go out and play lacrosse or would you rather study for the SAT? Forget the homework, hit the wall. <laughs> We're kidding, by the way, Mom and Dad, because on top of needing to have great scores for wherever you're going to go in college and in life, if you're going to look to play college lacrosse, that's the first thing to look at is GPA and SATs, right? Clearly, without a doubt, they, they ask where, where you fit in academically before they even look into lacrosse skills. So I will qualify this and say that this coach does have his priorities straight, but did mention that they were hampered last weekend due to uh, injuries and SATs. Any idea who might be uh, talking that? I'm thinking it's a team that lost a couple times, so it could be us. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with... Redondo. Coach Comito, yes indeed. So, uh, all right, so now while, while we're talking about Redondo, let's move over and talk a little bit about zone defense, okay? You mentioned off the air that there are more and more teams playing zone this year. Who are play, who's playing zone and why do you think they're playing zone? 
from what I've seen so far, I've seen, uh, I, well, I know, not seen, but I've seen Redondo in his own. I've seen Loyola in his own. I've seen Westlake in his own. I've seen Harvard Westlake in his own. So that's four or five teams that I can name off the top of my head uh, that are playing zone. I think at our level of play, it's tough to zip the ball around and beat a zone. It's confusing. You don't play against it in practice. Uh, you never see the same zone, per se. So it definitely throws a wrinkle in the mix. And uh, these teams have been pretty successful with it, especially with the, with the improvement of the goal. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that it's hard to practice against the zone if your team doesn't play zone and can put it up against, you know, you know what I'm saying? You can't, if your team doesn't play zone, it's hard for you to practice against it because there's no way to, to emulate that. Catch the team by surprise. And even if we do practice against it, we don't play it like the way the other teams do. So you can't emulate what they're doing. It's... I'm Drew Rogers. This is The Chief. We're going to come back in just a moment. We're gonna...